you Wycliffe. Um, let me just add my voice of uh, apology uh, as expressed by Salem Davadi. Uh, difficult to Mr. Kachuri, who was molested by some marauding youth who was completely uninvited to the event. I have uh, spoken to uh, Mr. Chira Waruru and apologize to him and uh, think we should let the matter rest there. Now, two of our colleagues, Honorable Kazdonzo Musioka, is still out of the country. And Honorable Moses Tangula is unwell. That's why he's not here with us. Honorable Jim Sorengo is um, away in Sierra on an election petition matter. Our statement here is uh, we reject sham elections. NASA campaign for electoral justice and democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, the meaningless exercise, a charade purported to be an election, is now behind us. Today, we return to the hard but essential task of making elections count and democracy work in Kenya. This is in line with the task we assigned ourselves at the beginning of our current journey. That we, we be the people who will end fraud not only in Kenya, but in all of Africa. And be the team that will uproot the evil culture of sham elections with the predetermined outcomes. Let me first express NASA's debt of deep, deep gratitude to all Kenyans who heeded our call to keep off the sham election and let Uhuru Kenyatta be the product of a fraud. By heeding the NASA's call, we exposed the so-called tyranny of numbers in Jubilee to be a fraud. 8 million plus votes Uhuru claimed to have secured in August to be the fiction and vote fiction and manipulation of figures by the IBC to be real. We gratefully acknowledge the many messages of solidarity received from pro-democracy activists across the globe who have expressed a desire to stand with the Kenyans in our quest for electoral justice. We have deeply appreciated and have been immensely inspired by these solidarity messages. The historical development which culminated in our call for poll boycott and to add a national resistance wing to NASA's formation have been canvassed adequately in our earlier statements. We'll mention this context, but only briefly. Since the Supreme Court annulled the presidential election, our country became deeply divided in the question of holding free, fair, and credible elections. This is shocking because no society that calls itself a democracy should be divided on the need for free, fair, and credible elections. A sham election that must not be allowed to stand. On the 26th of October, the IABC, at the behest of the Jubilee candidates, defied the court, reason, and national and international public opinion, and their own assessment, as revealed by ex-commissioner Rosalind Nakombe, and confirmed by Chairman Afula Chebukati, and conducted a sham election. You need to know, six days to the election, I and Honorable Msalem Dabadi had a meeting with Mr. Chebukati that lasted one full hour. He told us, in his own words, that he was not able to deliver credible elections. But he was going to meet with the Honorable Uru Kenyatta on a Monday. Tell him as much, then he would move to court or he would resign. 
he consistently warned that this election was going to be much worse than the previous one. It came to pass. The whole world witnessed that there was no election. International media has called it a charade, a sham, preposterously flawed, a historic mistake, among other things. Even after NASA's withdrawal, the local media projected on their television screens results pitting Uru Kenyatta and NASA's Raila Odinga, just as they did with the now famously discredited statistics of August 8th election. It seems that they were unable to come up with a new script. You would have seen when Uhuru Kenyatta's vote was 1 million minus 10,000, 2 million, 20,000, 3 million, 30,000, eventually 7.4 million, 73,000. The IABC was not able to produce a believable voter turnout figure even though the Kimskits are programmed to transmit the same every two hours. The chairman initially announced a figure of 48%, which translates to 9.4 million. Not realizing how preposterous that was, the vice downward to 6.55 million, translates to 33%. Many observers find even this figure optimistic. IBC then embarked on manufacturing turnout to show that Uhuru Kenyatta has a popular mandate. Our figures which we have is 3.5 million votes that were cast properly when Uhuru was rating against Kenyatta. Then later on, began to race against the turnout. The incident where Jubilee MP Alice Wahome physically molested a returning officer for transmitting election results without her input was widely reported, complete with footage. What input did the MP want to add in an election result where there was no contest? It can only be to inflate the voter turnout. We have evidence and such inputs were pro provided in several Jubilee strongholds. Kenyans also witnessed clear indications that the IABC was never in charge of this so-called election. Did the IABC giving regular updates as it had promised? Our television news got filled with county commissioners, police commanders, and Jubilee politicians giving information on the voting process, movement of materials, and other aspects of the process that IBC ought to have been in charge of. This is in addition to the Shambolic organization witness of the Bomas National Telling Center on Tuesday and Wednesday where commissioners and their chairman hardly ever met and in fact never communicated any joint position to the media or the observers. The IBC commissioners got deadlocked on the figures to assign to President Huru Kenyatta in light of the low voter turnout that all Kenyans and indeed the whole world witnessed. Cut short the long story of a sham and fraudulent exercise reiterate that this election must not stand. If allowed to stand, it will make a complete mockery of elections and might well be the end of the ballot as a means of instituting a government in Kenya. It will completely destroy the public confidence in the vote. These honorable people will not turn out to vote in elections predetermined outcomes. Elections will become coronation rituals for an imperial presidency. 
sham election will render useless the historic Supreme Court ruling that annulled the August 8th presidential election. On the eve of the election, he saw the ominous signs of Uhuru's threat to fix the problem in the Supreme Court. When the court failed to raise a quorum to hear a case challenging the legality of the election, on account of willful abstention of some some and intimidation of other judges, including the shooting the Deputy Chief Justice security detail the previous evening. On August 8th, the election was already used to master a fraudulent parliamentary majority. With Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, I was stated publicly that they intend to use this majority make constitutional changes. Parliament is on its way to becoming a rubber stamp of the executive as it was in the Kanu's one-party state. The regressive amendment to the election law has now come to force, effectively emasculating the IBC and the Supreme Court. If sham election is allowed to stand, what will stop the regime from conducting sham referenda to remove the constitutional provisions that they would do, do not like? Like, for example, term limits? Nothing. You will have achieved every despot's dream, which <coughs> the famous words of Lord Hewat of Bari is, and I quote, subordinate parliament to evade the courts and to render the will or the caprice of the executive unfettered and supreme." Unquote. The sham election portends a president who is in office unconstitutionally. You have a constitution with ambiguous provisions on the standards that elections must fulfill. The same constitution states that power can only be exercised by democratically elected leaders. A president who is elected in an election that does not comply with the constitution cannot legitimately be constitutionally and constitutionally exercise authority on behalf of the people. If election is allowed to stand, the highest office in the land will be occupied by a person who has usurped power. We in NASA are resolute that this sham election cannot and will not be allowed to stand. We will not allow two megalomaniacs to destroy the dream of freedom and democracy. to destroy the dream of freedom and democracy that generations have sacrificed and worked so hard for. We shall see to it that we conduct a free, fair, and credible presidential election as ordered by the Supreme Court. NASA's position on dialogue, on national dialogue. A national dialogue is being called for for many quarters. NASA is for dialogue. All political differences are resolved through dialogue. NASA has actively pursued dialogue with the IBC on the reforms required to hold up free, fair and credible elections. The engagement was in vain. Put forward the irreducible minimum reforms for free and fair elections. No one challenged them. The bone of contention was that they could not be done within 60 day window for the fresh elections. Leave it to those who argue that Bora Chaguzi in election will do. See Chaguzi Bora. Mal over what good the fascicle elections has done. Before engaging in any dialogue, must also be clear what differences we are sitting down to resolve. 
suggestions have been made. What is needed is a comprehensive, it's a, it's a compromise between Jubilee and NASA. There are even those who see the crisis as nothing more than a personal point between Uhuru Kenyatta and Ray Lodinga, or the Kenyattas and Lodingas, that could be resolved by a private arrangement. This view is mistaken. Political crisis we are in uh, is about free and fair elections, specifically and fundamentally is about democracy, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. Supreme Court ordered a repeat election held in compliance with the Constitution and the law. The order has not been complied with. It must be. It is in our best interest that we do so sooner rather than later. Our program of action. National resistance campaign. As you announced last week, NASA has two organs. The Coalition's Parliamentary Party, PP, and the National Resistance Movement. The city movement shall be responsible for implementing a vigorous, positive political action program that includes economic boycotts, peaceful processions, picketing, and other legitimate forms of protest. If there is no justice for the people, let there be no peace for the government. People's Assembly. Governments are not above constitutions, and the constitutions are not above the people. The people retain ownership of the sovereign power. This is the reason why all the progressive constitutions, the people reserve the right to exercise their sovereignty directly. That is contained in Article 1 of our Constitution. The fate of all governments that usurp and abuse power is to fall. We have obligated ourselves to respect, obey, and defend our constitution. We are now compelled by this obligation to chart our way back to democracy, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. We announce today the establishment of a People's Assembly. People's Assembly is the vehicle through which we will exercise the solemn duty of restoring democracy, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. The People's Assembly will be a broad-based forum consisting of elected leaders and the leadership of other sectors of society, in particular workers, civil society, religious leaders, women, youth and economic interest groups. We will be announcing the date and program of the Assembly's inaugural convention in the coming days. The People's Assembly will continue to exist until the legitimate presidency is renewed re restored. As part of the People's Assembly, NASA is forming a task force to look into the sy systemic governance weaknesses that have precipitated the unfolding political crisis, including, but not limited to, one, the systemic continuing failure of electoral bodies and the electoral system in general. Two, performance of national security organs, the abuse thereof by the executive. Three, political architecture and the structure of the executive and parliament in particular. Four, protection and safeguarding of devolution. Five, exclusion and discrimination in the allocation or distribution of public resources. Six, the continued inability of the state and our society in general deal with the root causes of political strife 
in particular poverty, unemployment, extreme inequality, economic marginalization, corruption, and historical grievances. We anticipate that the task force recommendations will include constitutional amendments that will be presented to the People's Assembly for adoption thereafter to the county assemblies for ratification. We call upon all county assemblies to pass resolutions supporting the establishment of the People's Assembly. Defense of the right to peaceful protest. Peaceful protest is an inalienable political right as an alienable political right, is one of the most important freedoms that we have secured for ourselves in our 2010 constitution. Every person has a right peaceably and unwound to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions to public authorities. That is Article 37. Since the announcement of the August 8th election, the Uri government has sought to criminalize dissent. Over 60 innocent Kenyans, including children, have died needless, needless deaths, and many more maimed at the hands of would be despots seeking to impose their will on the people. A system of government where dissent is criminalized as, as a name it is called a totalitarian state. We are often reminded that external vigilance is the price we must pay for liberty. So we will guard our right to dissent by exercising it. We will continue to assemble, demonstrate, to picket, and to present petition to public authorities as often as we choose. God bless Kenya. Thank you.